Great day. Thank y'all for uh, joining us. I want to appreciate um, Denise and Pink Leopard for um, uh, honoring me and, and uh, having me on as a part of the blog. Uh, she's, I've known Denise for a long time, uh, probably creeping up, well, let's see, this year it'll be 20 years, I think. So we met, uh, met in college at Southern Miss, and uh, when she first walked in, uh, I said, hey, Denise, I asked her if she's still crazy, because, you know, Denise don't play games. She, she, uh, y'all know her smiling and happy. Uh, she'd only smile if uh, something was really funny, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that I said um, uh, thank you and that I appreciate you, Denise, uh, for asking me to talk a little bit this morning. I I'm not going to talk long. I wanted to um, expound, if I could, on the, the subject of confidence and particularly confidence and leadership. Uh, this past, the past two weeks have been extremely interesting, especially in the world of sports. Um, it's been interesting because we had um, a, a very polarizing uh, figure who's been in the news uh, for the past 14 days, 15 days, and he's been in the news in, in almost every cycle on almost every um, type of news station, whether it was on the Bloomberg channel or whether you were looking at ESPN. Uh, everybody was talking about Cam Newton. And they were talking about Cam Newton for a variety of reasons. Folks talked about uh, the fact that he was an African-American quarterback who has defied every stereotype of what an African-American uh, quarterback playing in the NFL should and uh, could be. Uh, folks have talked about his dabbing and what that means and culturally uh, what that says about African-Americans and what we contribute to the game of football. So we've heard all these conversations, but there's one thing that uh, has surfaced over and over and over again. It's been one word that I've heard about Cam that, quite frankly, it has frustrated me, and that word has been arrogance. Uh, we've heard Cam referred to as being arrogance, and I, I just want to challenge y'all uh, for a minute. I want you to think about this. Um, if you are black, if you are male, if you are successful, if you have confidence and you don't hide that confidence, you show that confidence, uh, most of the time people call you what? Yeah, arrogant. If you are um, not black, uh, you are confident, um, you get stuff done, uh, you don't apologize for that confidence. Most of the time people call you assertive. So you got assertiveness, you got arrogance. But in Cam Newton's case, in most black men's case, uh, it's called arrogance. Uh, if you're a black woman and you exhibit confidence, you know your stuff, you don't apologize for it. As a black woman, you are typically seen as the angry black woman, right? Uh, you don't get a lot of airtime. They don't like to show you on TV a lot because you uh, uh, exude what they consider to be um uh, madness, or you're angry all the time, but but at the same time, you can be uh, not black, um, have that same confidence, you can have that same know what you know attitude, not apologize for it, and and, and that's called feminism. Is that not crazy? It's, it's crazy because the double standard exists, and I want y'all to be careful that you don't buy into it. Before I say anything else, I want you to be very clear on the fact that you don't have to apologize for confidence. But if you're going to be confident, you got to make sure that you're confident in something that is bigger than you. So in other words, you got to make sure, according to the scripture, the scripture says that I, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord. So that boasting, that, that confidence that you have is because uh, my mama calls it when you know what you know, you know what you know. So what does that mean? It means, number one, that you've got to take uh, real consideration uh, to sharpen your skill set. You can't be confident and you don't know Jack. Right? You can't be confident and you in the room and everybody in the room knows more than you know. You got to be confident that, that you are in command of a certain set of information. You got to be confident uh, in the fact that you are in command of a sharpened and a heightened set of skills and that you are using those uh, uh, heightened set of skills, that command of knowledge for the better and greater good. 
See, confidence uh, is something that comes as a result of sacrifice. It comes as a result of you working uh, to accomplish a set of things. And in doing that, uh, you, you're able to be impactful and make sure that people are able to uh, realize and recognize the impact that you're making. Uh, if um, you're here, you're doing a set of things, God is giving you space and, and time to do it, but people don't. Uh, when you're done with that work, when you're finished with that work and people don't recognize and realize that you're no longer there, it's probably because you were not as impactful. A lack of confidence will keep you from doing the things that nobody else was called to do. So you got to be you got to really, really be confident uh, to decide that that even in the midst of everything that goes on, uh, uh, if it's 1958 and you're mega Evers, you got to be confident that the work that you're doing is worth one day uh, you're losing your life. You got to be confident if you're Dr. Martin Luther King and you know um, that that walk from Selma to Montgomery was going to be one uh, that would have folks questioning your leadership. And you got to stand at Montgomery, the steps of the Montgomery Capitol, and give a speech entitled, How Long? You, you got to really, really, really have confidence if you're going to be um, uh, Rahman Ibrahima, who was a prince from Africa brought into Natchez, Mississippi, and fought for his freedom, even uh, appealed to the President of the United States at that time in the 1800s for his freedom. Finally was able to get free from slavery uh, in order to attempt to travel back to Africa. You got to have confidence in who you are and how you were created and who you are eventually uh, supposed to evolve into. So don't, don't you allow that confidence uh, to be quenched by people who don't have the same confidence that you have. It's interesting. Uh, we uh, talked about Cam Newton, the fact that Cam Newton uh, exudes this confidence. There's another parallel conversation that, that was happening about Cam as well. That parallel conversation was about uh, Cam's ability to lead. You talk to the people on his team. Uh, you talk to the coaches. They believe in this brother. They believe that when he gets on that field, that he can make anything happen. You know why? Because there was a level of confidence that this man brings to the football field, that this man brings to the locker room, and then that confidence is translated into execution. So real leadership has the ability to execute. So, uh, again, remember I just said a little while ago that you got to have confidence um, and, and that confidence ought to put you in a space and time that's given by God in order to impact people's lives. And if they don't realize and recognize that you've gone uh, after your time has passed and it's probably because you were not impactful, well, that's where execution comes in. This, this brother, uh, 26 years old, Cam Newton, we're going to talk, we'll probably be talking about him for the next generation. Uh, uh, just because he lost his last Super Bowl, it doesn't mean that he's done. Uh, but but we're going to be talking about this brother for a long time, and we're going to be talking about him not because of his arrogance uh, or his confidence, but, but quite frankly, we're going to be talking to him because the arrogance that some people call it, but the confidence that I call it, that, that propels him into leadership is uh, because he has the ability to execute. So... I don't know what it, you know what y'all are into. You may be in the fashion out of soon because you're tuned in uh, to the Pink Leopard channel. But you got to have confidence in your own designs, right? You got to have confidence in your own stylistic views. You got to be daring enough to say, you know what, we're going to break away from cultural norms and we're going to establish and determine some new norms around a new and an evolving culture. But that takes leadership. You can't sit on the sidelines and think that you're going to be a mogul, but everything that you're producing, everything that you're putting out is something that is already out there. There's something that people have already begun to, uh, to uh, validate. Think about it. I, I want you to think about this. Um, Chanel, Coco Chanel uh, did not wait on people to validate the stuff that she put out. She put her stuff out and then told you, my stuff is all that. And because it's all that, there's a, there, there then uh, a demand is created because of her confidence in her stuff. Nobody puts something out and then says, I hope y'all like it. Uh, I hope you wear what, um, what I'm creating. No, she got, she, she got a bunch of people to put on her designs, to put on the things that she was creating, uh, to wear um, her, her Chanel jewelry, whatever the case may be. 
and to walk out there and, and exude the same confidence that she has in what she's doing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's called leadership. It's called leadership when you don't have to wait on other people uh, to, to, to bring something to the forefront that's already been there. So what does it take? Uh, you, got, you got confidence, you got leadership, neither can exist. Uh, or, or should I say leadership cannot exist without confidence. And confidence without, uh, without the courage to lead is really arrogance. See, so that's the difference. If, if you got confidence, but you also got the courage to put your neck on the line to lead, that's not arrogance. That, that's something that's called, let's get it done. That's called getting the work done. But if you don't have the, uh, if you're not a risk taker, uh, if you don't have courage to put your neck on the line to say that what I'm doing is worth it, then you're not going to produce anything worth anybody following. And that's, just, that's what this leadership uh, conversation is all about. I'll say this and then I'll let y'all get back to the rest of your day. But I want, I want to be very clear that every great thing that we're having an opportunity to experience is because of great leaders who had confidence in what they were called to do and who they were called by. And they had confidence in the people that they were called to. So you got to know your niche. You got to create your brand around your niche. And while you're doing that, you got to be confident enough to be able to lead in order to get that kind of stuff done, to get that accomplished. So, so there's um, uh, this, uh, this amazing story uh, that my great-grandfather tells about um, when he was uh, traveling. I think it was back in the 20s. And he was on his way um, to Pocahontas, and he was on Kickapoo Road in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, pulling out uh, of the Kickapoo Road, he gets T-boned. Gets T-boned, and there's a white man who's driving the vehicle. My great-grandmother is in the car with him. Um, uh, the, the white guy who T-bones him suffers a broken arm. Police come. They take my great-grandfather to jail because the white man got his arm broken. Well, my great grandmother was upset. She's, you know, you got to remember it's the 20s, it's Mississippi, it's uh, the woods, uh, a lot of trees. Yeah, y'all get it. Y'all understand. Well, his, his confidence and his righteousness, all right, stay with me, his confidence in the fact that he hadn't done anything kept this level of arrogance from raising up that, that would, uh, in some sense, will want him to try to defend himself, act a fool, fight and cut up. Uh, his level of confidence in the fact that he will be justified by a God who called him to the work that he was doing was able to rise up before his that level of arrogance, was able to rise up before uh, this um, haughty spirit. And as a result of that, he was able to calmly talk to the police officers, get himself uh, in a situation where he wasn't able to stay in jail as long as they were trying to keep him because he stayed humble. And as a result of that, he was able to go home to my great-grandmother. As a result of that, my grandmother was born. As a result of that, my mama was born. As a result of that, I am here. You have no clue who your confidence and who you are. That's going to create a level of humility that God has room to then exalt you to a level of leadership. You have no idea how many generations that's getting ready to affect. Two generations, three generations later, here I am on the mail of the city of Jackson because this brother decided that, you know what, I don't care what they're saying about me. I don't care what they think about me. I'm confident in the leadership that I bring to the table as a result of that confidence. I'm going to keep my eyes on the prize. I'm going to stay focused. Uh, I'm going to be sure that all of the things that were written uh, by the scholar Juan Williams uh, in the book, Eyes on the Prize, uh, all of those things that were fought for, all of those things that uh, were done on my behalf, I got the ability to make sure that I am the right one to bear. Uh, the rest of this burden so that our people can be better, so that folks can see uh, better them, uh, have a better outcome and a better outlook on life. So I'm challenging y'all today, whoever you are, whatever you got going on, whatever uh, your plans for life are, whatever your dreams, your visions, your aspirations, have confidence, be humble, and lead. We need you.
We need you to make it. We need you to be greater today than you were yesterday. There's an entire generation of folks that's ready for leaders just like y'all to step up. Thank you for uh, joining us. God bless you. Uh, I'll entertain uh, uh, any questions. Uh, feel free uh, to follow me on social media at Tony Yarber, uh, T-O-N-Y-Y-A-R-B-E-R. -E I'm on Instagram and uh, Twitter. Uh, also, I periscope a little bit um, at T Yarber. So thank you all again for joining.